and welcome to the second episode of the Christian Shepreneur show. So today I actually wanted to talk about uh, my story. So as we go on this entire, you know, Christian Shepreneur journey, I want you to know uh, my why uh, so you can understand who you're learning from, who you're talking to, who you're getting to know. And, you know, I would um, really enjoy getting to know you too. So if you want to share your story, your why in the comments, um, that would be great. And if you feel a little vulnerable or you don't want to put yourself out there, um, you are invited to join our free Facebook group, um, Usable Vessels, and share your story there. Um, the group is exclusive to women. It's a safe space. Um, and so you are, um, you can feel comfortable sharing there if you don't feel comfortable sharing in the comments. So my story, okay, uh, my story, let me, let me all show you, let me all, whew, there's some English there. Let me show you all, um, a photo. I think I have it here. I do. Okay. Do you see this? That's me when I was little. <laughs> That's me. Um, can I just get some points for being in my brand colors? Just pink and white. Um, so when I was first born, 1987, um, doctors told my parents, do not name your daughter. And they told them, not to name me because they didn't think I would live very long. Um, it had been a very uh, problematic birth. Uh, my mother will tell you, in her words, Ooh, Denise almost killed me, right? Um, she was having seizures, she kept turning blue, um, and she had to have an emergency hysterectomy because a tumor had grown and was suffocating me and killing my mother. And so she had an emergency hysterectomy, which is how I was born. It was very complicated, um, very problematic. And again, they told my parents um, not to name me because they were trying to help my parents not get too attached, right? They didn't want them to feel, I guess that was like a coping mechanism back in the 80s. And, um, and God did a miracle and I lived. And he did miracle after miracle. Like they told me I wouldn't, um, probably wouldn't live past 12, then past 20. Um, and at 32, I, um, I am grateful to be alive. And also, I feel like uniquely aware of the opportunity that life presents us. I think so often when someone doesn't suffer from chronic health issues, it can be so easy to um, live life without intention, feel like you don't have a purpose, you don't know what your purpose is. Like, um, now yes, I was audibly told at 13 by God when I asked what my purpose was, but honestly, I feel like if you don't feel like you know what your purpose is, it's okay to like choose one. Right. Like um, the, the Bible is full of instructions on how to um, treat others and ourselves like living out that just being a help and a blessing and an encouragement to um, someone else in life. I feel like if you don't have a purpose, you can borrow mine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you don't feel like you know what it is. Um, but I, I feel like honestly, I'm more uniquely aware um, of how important it is to live life with intention, honestly, because of just how I enter life, right? When you enter life with an obstacle of like just existing, you are, um, you're just more aware. Um, and that awareness and that knowing that anything is possible with God, because he literally like would go against what doctors would say, Doctors say you're going to die. God would say I'm going to live. Doctors would say you're going to live in a hospital. Um, God would say, you know, you'll be able to go to school as a regular person and college and work. Um, when my health felt like it was saying, okay, you can't do this nine to five. You don't have the health for it. You are laying in the backseat of your car on lunch breaks. You are barely surviving 
like life in general trying to work full time god showed me how he gave me like the tools and the put the people in my life to show me that i could start a business and when my business was not making money because i just wanted to help people um he put the resources in my life to not only show me how to make a business where i make money but how to make a business where um, I get paid just by helping people and sharing what I know, right? Most of my life, um, I got paid for doing, right? I was a secretary, I, I did their schedule, I did their errands, I did all of their admin work. Then I got paid for marketing. I, um, I did the strategy, I implemented it, right? Like I, I, I was on the phone and, and, and had coordinated all of the, the magazines and the print ads and the radio ads and the campaigns and I typed it all out and I did the Facebook ads. So the, the bulk of my adult life when I worked, I was a doer. But when my health said, okay, you can't keep doing, once again, all of these can't, um, God has always been so amazing to show me what I can do. Doctors say you can die. You're going to die. God says I can live. Uh, my health says you can't do this work. God was like, hey, you know, all the work you have been doing has prepared you to be a coach and help others, you know, do what they've been called to do turn their gifts into online courses and programs, right? Encourage them that they can. Um, so that's like my story. I went from a problematic birth to becoming a living, breathing miracle. And, um, and there has been work involved, <laughs> right? Um, thank you for the heart. So like, one of my favorite stories I, sh I like to share, even from an early age, is that if you're willing to, and the scripture that I have for this basically is not an you know, exact, but the scripture that I have, one of my favorite scriptures is Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all shall be added. And Matthew 6 basically talks about um, uh, different things, but one of the things it talks about is provision, right? And how God is a provider. And he literally like provides for, you know, the birds and the animals. They don't, they do not work. They do not have a 401k, <laughs> right? But they are seen about by him. Um, and, oh, thank you, uh, Vanessa. Uh, wait, sorry, I can't see. Carissa, hey, how are you? How are you? It's good to see you. And yes, amen. Oh, yes, I know you can relate, <laughs> Carissa. Carissa is the reason that I have my passport, so I credit her for all of my travel. Um, and I'm grateful to have her in my life because she sparked the travel bug in me that I didn't even realize wanted to be sparked. Um, but yeah, so um, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all will be added. So it talks about provision. And I think back to like when I was 16 and I was applying everywhere for a job. Okay. I was applying everywhere because I wanted money. And I applied at Astro, like Walmart, Chick-fil-A, uh, Chuck E. Cheese. I was not picky. Um, every week I would, uh, take the bus two hours to a mall that was only 20 minutes away so I could spend the day applying and then asking had they gotten my resume. <laughs> that was funny. Um, and, um, and nobody would hire me. I spent the entire summer applying for jobs and no one hired me, no door open. And then... Uh, so I'm 17 now, my senior year of high school, and I was supposed to uh, take one class, but I ended up being in another class. It was a co-op. No, I wasn't even in the class. God is so amazing. So I was in a class, and the co-op class was going on a field trip for job interviews, and the person who was supposed to go on the field trip missed. So I don't know how, but well, God, God, sorry, God is in his amazingness. Um, God had the teacher from another class come in my classroom and pick me to invite me on the field trip, right? So I go on the field trip, not even in a co-op class, 
and I was one of the ones that was hired to be for NASA. That job, I don't remember exactly how much it paid, but I know it was a lot for that time. It was either like 12 or 13.99, like one of those. And um, it was how I bought my first car. And it was also what let me know uh, that while I did enjoy making money, <laughs> I did not enjoy working in a cubicle in a nine to five. It was not fun, right? So back like, then I thought I wanted to be in TV, but um, what I did see, the lesson that I learned, and it's one of my favorite stories, is that when, when you, one, yes, have a relationship with God and trust him and put in the work and do not lose the faith like you, when I say do not lose the faith, so my actions show that I had faith that he would open up the door for the opportunity that he had for me. And I did not allow my lack of seeing it, right? My lack of evidence. Um, I didn't let it stop me. I didn't let it discourage me. Um, and the thing was, if I had gotten what I wanted, I would have been working at Walmart or Chick-fil-A or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that. The thing is, though, is God had something so much better for me. Like I was a Whataburger. I remember turned me down. They said I was overqualified. <laughs> I just I remember like applying so many places, and I thought um, I thought those no's meant like wow, no one wants me. That's what I thought the no's meant. And then when I got the job at NASA, I realized a valuable lesson that I hold to this day. That is, if you trust God and you put in the work, what he has for you is so much better. That's what I learned from my own life. And it's why I've seen so many miracles. And what I've learned from Joseph's life is that if God gives you a dream or a vision, nothing can stop it. Like Joseph had a dream at a very young age and almost everything in his life said your dream is false your vision will not come true right his brothers his family sold him into slavery he was falsely accused of sexual assault then he was thrown in prison for something else like joseph was going through but nothing could stop the vision the dream that god had given him at a very young age from coming true and when it came true and Joseph not only uh, rose to uh, be just under Pharaoh, right? So in our days, we would call that he rose to great influence, great uh, power position. But he was used to help like so many people. Like he saved an entire nation, nations of people from famine. And I personally believe that our vision, our dreams um, that God give us for our life, for our business is to put us in a position to be a help to people. Um, and like my story is no different. So the things that have happened in my life, if I looked at it at face value, which is why we walk by faith and not by sight, if I looked at the things in my life from a certain perspective, it would be easy for me to say like, you know, just stop it. You don't have the energy. Um, it's too hard. It's taking too long. But if I look at it through the eyes of faith, I can see miracle after miracle after miracle, open door after open door after open door, right? So 2016 is when I finally decided to, when I mentioned going from my nonprofit to my business, and I went from making $535 in three years to making over $25,000 in the next 10 months. Thank you for the like. And I've been, I've served on a Forbes Coaches Council. I've published two books. I've published two books and have one coming called Greater Is Calling. Um, and I've been able to serve over 400 women entrepreneurs um, and connect with thousands of women entrepreneurs and um, and I'm just honestly I am so very grateful for all God has allowed me to accomplish 
one because yes it's done things for me right like um, I got to uh, quit my day job <laughs> and um, work um, in a business that I enjoy you know it's let me travel to Dubai and Toronto and Niagara Falls and Florence and Nice and Cairns um, and I think that and oh and those are like the you know people like to hear the exotic places but can I just say some of my favorite trips are when I get to travel to San Antonio for business because I really like the river walk um, so it's opened up doors like that um, and just so many other things it lets me explore my creative side like um, my box right like the creative part of me like the business side is like oh, okay when you sell this many you make this much but my creative side is like ooh, glitter <laughs> so um i just wanted to before we kind of get too far into the season i wanted you to know a little bit about me about how i got into this business um about if you ever kind of see different things i do and it seems like wow you you do so much one it's it's smaller what you see is smaller than what I plan like it's it's less if that makes sense like my ideas are shh, right and what I do is a small fraction of that I'm grateful for it and it's because I'm driven because I understand the calling that God God has for my life and the role that my business plays with that so if you are feeling uninspired unmotivated burnt out I would invite you to have a conversation with God to Matthew 6 33 <laughs> your life and business and ask him what um, calling does he have for you ask him what specific purpose in this season if you haven't lately does he have for you for your life and for your business and I am telling you when he answers when he realigns your priorities and shows you what to do and how to do it to me it's just an unstoppable feeling right um and and if it's been a while since you've experienced that then i would encourage you to do that now and um, if you need my help or assistance with planning out your business um getting back motivated or just understanding like maybe you have an idea of what you want to do but you're not sure how to go about it that is what I do. I help you with the how. Um, so just let me know. And if you just want to be in a community where you're surrounded by women who have the same goal of building their dream life and their dream business, um, you are invited to join us in the Usable Vessels community on Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, make sure to share them below in the comments. Before we go, if you want some motivation, um, one of the books that I have published with some other beautiful, inspiring women is called You Can. Um, because, again, when you live a life being told you can't, um, you and God himself teaches you that you can, you kind of get it, right? Like, people will think it, but if you think you can, why aren't you doing the action to show that you think you can, you believe you can, you see what I'm saying? So, uh, it, it's available on Amazon. It's called You Can, and it's basically 13 stories, uh, just like mine, of women who have done uh, just extraordinary things because they believed um, that they they could. They believed that it was, um, it was possible. Um, and with God, literally all things are possible. We say it, but I'm telling you, when, when you actually believe it, your life will change. So thank you all so much for watching episode two of the Christian Sheepreneur. If there are specific topics, um, tutorials, trainings, or questions that you'd like me to cover on the show, make sure to let me know in the comments or by sending me a message. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.